How do you do? My name's Simon Stevens, and uh, I am a PhD candidate in the Nuclear Futures Institute in Bangor University in North Wales. And we're trying to use impedance spectroscopy to look at grain growth inside UO2 when you dope varying amounts of chromium into the material, with the idea being that the larger the grain, the more robust the material is, and uh, the longer you can keep it inside a reactor before it starts breaking it apart. The way we do that is we introduce an AC signal, or sweep, sweep through a bunch of AC signals throughout through the material to characterise it, uh, its impedance through uh, the real and imaginary aspects of the impedance of the material. When you introduce a low frequency into the material, um, what happens is the capacitive aspect of the material fully charges very quickly, but then the rest of the time throughout the, the, the full cycle of, of the, um, the sine wave, is it's, it can't go through there anymore, as is the same with a capacitor, so it has to go through the entire uh, entirety of the material as though it was purely resistive. And on the Nyquist plot, we can see over here, on the example, we've got 1K of resistance. Um, so the real aspect, that, the traditional way that you look at resistance. When you start increasing the frequency, you start to match how quick the frequency is compared to the time that the material can charge in its capacitive uh, aspect. And that's where we get the peak in the imaginary on the Nyquist plot. Uh, once you start exceeding that, what happens is it starts to behave like a bed short through the, material, um, through the capacitive aspect of the material and then starts bypassing the material as a whole through that, that part. So the 1K, you get no electrons going through there. It's, a, it's, it's all just going through the charge and discharge of the material. And we get this lovely arch is what you would expect with a crystal, a single crystal of material. Beautiful arch. When we put it onto a polycrystalline material, we end up with uh, two arches. That's what we expect to see with a polycrystalline material, because you have two um, modes for, for the charge to, to, uh, to be carried through the material. The right-hand side is what you'd have for your grain uh, the, 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 the grain boundary of the material, and then on the left-hand side is the bulk of the material in its entirety. And what's fantastic about this is we can characterise each one individually. Uh, and as you see on the, on the graph, we, we've got various amounts of uh, chrome built into the material, taking various measurements of it uh, to determine the grain size. What is really cool is when we did another run uh, making pellets and since we're in the pellets, uh, we had a, a middle attribute going on that we didn't really understand at the time. We assumed that the probes that we put on the material were maybe not the best and that might have contributed to another attribute on there so we decided to polish the material and what happened there is it got much much worse why i'm so excited about this is because um, it can be used as a fantastic way of uh, quality control when you're making the material itself when you're making the pellets because it's a non-destructive non method of measuring the material and you can quickly analyse the material and make sure that you are getting what you intend to, that there are no cracks or, or any, any deformities inside the material. So this is a really good aspect of, of, of uh, impedance spectroscopy as well. Going forward, we need to do a lot more runs of this, start getting error bars in there and start nailing it down exactly what we're seeing. So that, that, I'm looking forward to doing that and also I'd like to look at other uh, metal oxide fields as well um, to, to characterise them. Uh, thank you very much.